I don't know what picture of God you might have. You may have grown up in an environment where you've thought that God wants to restrict you, God wants to limit you, God wants to minimize you, or that God is angry or disappointed with you. Well, I'm here to tell you that our God of the Bible is a loving God. Psalm 119 says He is good and He does good and He works all things together for good and your God is on your side. I'm pumped up because we are speaking in this series about the fact that you can do it. Now, you know, maybe you come from an environment where someone has told you that you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not talented enough. You're not eloquent enough. You're not gifted enough. But I'm here to tell you today that Christ in you is the hope of glory and he has given you everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness. And if God said it, you can do it. That God will supernaturally give you the ability to do what he's called you to do and to be all that he's called you to be. And we're going to go to one of my favorite Bible characters and Joshua in the book of Joshua. So if you turn with me today to Joshua chapter one, verse nine. And it's nice to be in an environment where you're told that you could do it because there's lots of negative environments in the world today. Have you noticed that where people want to give you a hundred reasons why you cannot do it? But I think it's great that we understand that we have a God who wants us to succeed. We have a God who has given us everything that we need to fulfill our God-given purpose and our God-given destiny. When I, I haven't even got to the text yet. I'm so fired up because I grew up in a religious tradition and a religious environment that never made me feel like I could actually do anything well or succeed. I grew up thinking that I was a worm. In fact, I heard frequently in my home, Christina, if you do something wrong, which was really frequently, okay, if you do something wrong, God will punish you. God will be very disappointed with you. So I had this picture of God as this, you know, big guy in the sky with a huge beard, holding a big stick, just waiting for me to do something wrong every second and that he would just kind of have great joy and just boof, you know, hitting me over the head and kind of like as if what kind of God is going to get off on us doing things wrong and just punishing us all the time. Not the kind of God that the Bible talks about, a God where Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundant. It is the will of God. It is the purpose of God. It is the heart of God that you and I live a passionate, abundant, overflowing, victorious Christian life. So I don't know what picture of God you might have. You may have grown up in an environment where you've thought that God wants to restrict you. God wants to limit you. God wants to minimize you or that God is angry or disappointed with you. Well, well, I'm here to tell you that our God of the Bible is a loving God. Psalm 119 says he is good and he does good and he works all things together for good. And your God is on your side. He is on your side. So the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua, it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, that always just cracks me up. Like, who, who's your dad? Nun. Okay. Anyway, it's just like none. Um, Moses's assistant. Moses, my servant is dead. Now that just cracks me up already that you would have to tell someone that someone's dead when they already know that they're dead. So obviously Joshua was hesitant to step into his role as the leader because God had to go, hey, I'm just reminding you, the guy before you, he's not here anymore. So you need to step up and into your God-given purpose and your God-given destiny. It says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. I love this. Just as I promised to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may have good success wherever you go. I want you to grab that so that you may have good success. Do you know that it's the will of God for you to succeed? Yeah. 
Do you know that God's success is actually a Bible word? Some of us, we're very frightened of this word. So we think, you know, it's not cool to be a Christian and to talk about success. Christine, you know, that sounds arrogant. That sounds like, you know, there's selfish ambition associated to that. But the Bible says that there is a good success. Now, that suggests to me that perhaps there's a not so good success as well. But success is a biblical word. Success is not a worldly word. It does not bring glory to God. For you to live a defeated, negative, depressed life. It brings great glory to God when we radiate the light and the life of Christ. When we are excellent in every aspect of our being. I love to see Christians succeed. I love to see Christians winning. I love to see Christians being the head and not the tail. Being above only and not beneath. I love to see Christians glorify God through their excellence. I'm not talking about perfection. But I am talking about excellence, being the best that we can be to the glory of God. Scripture tells us that it is to our Father's great glory that we bear not a little bit of fruit, but that we bear much fruit. Now, if you're going to bear fruit for God, you've got to be successful. There is a little spirit that permeates some circles that say, you know, just just be you. Like, yes, do you, boo. But how about we keep getting a little bit a better us? So some of us, I didn't get saved to just stay where I am. I'm being sanctified through and through. I'm going from faith to faith, from grace to grace, from glory to glory. So you go, well, Jesus just loves me as I am. Yes, he does. He couldn't love you any more or any less, but he loves you too much to leave you as you are. He wants us to actually become conformed and transformed to his image, which means we ought to be growing. We ought to be becoming more Christ-like. And so I want us over the next couple of weeks to look at this whole issue of success because I don't want you to just stay where you are because there's a whole lot more on the inside of you. You know, at Propel, we often talk about celebrating every woman's purpose, passion and potential because I believe there's more in you than you realize. And I want to speak to the potential on the inside of you on the other side of the screen. I want to speak to the potential on the inside of you. You are created in the image of God. You are filled with God-given purpose and you are filled with God-given destiny. There is more on the inside of you than you can even realize. You are endowed with the seeds of greatness. You are engineered for success. God has put his spirit on the inside of you and you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Don't settle for a small, mediocre, contained, limited life. Let's be the kind of people that live a passionate, purpose-driven, God-glorifying life in our lives. So he says to Joshua, I want you to have good success. God was not sending Joshua into the promised land to fail. God does not set us up to fail. It doesn't bring him glory if we're like, you know, it's just so bad and it's so hard and I'm just so miserable and I'm just a Christian and you too can be miserable and a Christian just like me. You know, you too. (laughs) How much more God glorifying is to say, you know what? There are challenges, absolutely. There are obstacles. There are hurdles. We all go through trials. We all go through challenges. But let me talk to you about the God that's on the inside of me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Let me talk to you about the God that gives me victory over my circumstances, gives me grace to go through my circumstances, helps me to overcome challenges, helps me to overcome hurdles. We don't want to be a kind of people that just sit back and go, well, okay, sarah, sarah whatever will be will be you know I just can't change anything I've just got to my Bible tells me that he makes my lot fall in pleasant places that God wants me to have a wide open spacious life that brings him great glory so I want to speak to the potential on the inside of you I want to inspire you in this series to desire good success, not to run from it, but to lean into it, to say, God, I want to get sharper, more effective for your kingdom, more fruitful for your kingdom. I want that kind of success. Now, words of commissioning are always very important. And here God is commissioning Joshua to go into the promised land. Now, the fact is they'd been here once before. They'd been on the edge to the border of the promised land before. But what happened was that Moses had sent 12 leaders into the promised land to spy out the land, Numbers 13 and Numbers 14. And 10 of the 12 came back with a negative report. Now, remember, these were leaders 
This is why you could be a stay-at-home mother, but in your home to your children, you're helping to guide them and direct them if you're watching this. In some capacity, all of us lead somebody in some kind of capacity. Now, a leader has the potential to take someone into their destiny or to keep them from their destiny. And so 10 leaders kept an entire generation out of their purpose and destiny. If we learn to forge our identity based on who God says that we are, based on what God says that we can do, then we can rise up and we can have good success. Because even back then, when 10 of the spies said, you know what, we can't do this. There are giants in the land. There's too many of them. The obstacles are too big. The city is fortified. It's just too hard to have victory. Then you know what, they didn't have victory because as they thought, that's exactly what happened. They didn't think they could, so they couldn't. But there was two men out of the 12 that said, you know what? We are well able to take the land. If God said we can do it, it doesn't matter how big the giants are. It doesn't matter how many obstacles there are. It doesn't matter how hard the challenges are. If God said it, we can do it. And because of that, when God raised up Joshua, he said, you said we are well able. You and Caleb were the ones that believed that you could go into the promised land. So you now are going to go into that promised land. Land. I am commissioning you. Moses, my servant is dead. It's now your opportunity. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need strength and you're going to need courage and you're going to need to obey my word. And if you go in my strength, if you go with my courage, if you obey the word of God, meditate on it day and night, you will have good success. You will have good success. And I believe it's the same truth for us today. The same truth for us today is that if we will abide in the word of God. The last verse here says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. I wonder what you're meditating on because you become what you think about. You become what you behold. Where you look, you will go. And so if you are spending all your life binge watching Netflix, I know nobody here is, but I'm just talking for everybody else on the other side of the screen. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but when we do that at the expense of being in the Word of God, being in the presence of God, because what you fill your mind with, that's what's going to come out of you. And that's what you're going to do with your life. He says, you need to meditate on this Word day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written in it. That's a very big key. Not just read it, you've got to do it. It's amazing to me, some people, they can memorize entire chapters of the Bible. And I'm like, that's awesome, but are you doing it? Sometimes you don't get the breakthrough because you're simply not doing what God says. He says, you know, if you want to prosper and have great success, then there is some stuff that really you shouldn't be doing because it is destroying your life and it is holding you back from having great success. When God asks us to do something and says, hey, it's a good idea that you don't do this, it's not because he's some cosmic killjoy. It's not that he's sitting up in heaven going, oh, how can I make my kids depressed today? How can I just make them not enjoy themselves today? God made us so God knows how we work best. So he knows if you do this, you are going to work at optimum capacity and you are going to flourish in life. If you don't do this, you are going to save yourself a lot of heartache. You're going to save yourself a lot of pain. You're going to save yourself a lot of suffering. You're going to save yourself a lot of destruction. When God commands us not to do something, it's not because he is some judgmental, mean God. It's because he's a loving heavenly father. And the Bible says that, you know what, if, if we who are not even good give good things to our children, how much more? Would our heavenly father want to do good things for us? Now, I'm a mother and I've got two kids. And, you know, my kids are just normal, normal kids. And so there are certain things that I say to them you shouldn't do. From a young age, I used to say, you know, don't run across the 405 freeway in Los Angeles, California. It's got eight lanes going each way. Now, I didn't say that to them because I hate my kids. I didn't say that because I didn't want them to miss out on having fun. Oh, I just wanted to limit them and contain them. I told them not to run across the road or a freeway. And I put a boundary around them and kept them within the fence of our home. Not because I hated them, but because I love them because I wanted to protect them. And I knew that if they were going to run across the street or run across the freeway, then their life would be ruined. They would be killed. They would be destroyed. When God says, I want you to stay within the boundaries of my word,
It is because I love you and I want to protect you and I don't want your life to be short-circuited. I want you to flourish. I don't want you to be destroyed. And of course, you can make those choices. Joshua could have made those choices. Any of us can. God will not override our free will. God is not going to come and do something for us that only we can do ourselves. You know, you get to choose what you want to do. I grew up in Sydney, Australia, one of the most beautiful cities on earth. And we have a beautiful Sydney Harbour Bridge. I don't know if you've ever been, but if you've never been, you need to go to Sydney. It is awesome. Yeah. And across the Harbour Bridge, you know, you've got several lanes going one way and several lanes coming up the other way. And in the afternoon during peak hour traffic, they change which lanes are open to be able to go, you know, one coming this way, one going that way. And so the way you know if you can drive down is because there is a green tick on the lane that your car can go and there's a red cross if you cannot. That's how it's done over the bridge. You never quite know how that's going to be configured. It depends on how bad the traffic is. Sometimes they open up extra lanes. So you've really got to watch for that. Now, I remember as I was going down one and there was a green tick on my light, peak out traffic. It was insane. Although now living in Los Angeles, Sydney traffic is, you know, it's beautiful. It seemed like a walk in the park, okay, in comparison. But as I was driving, I just kind of was going, you know, it was all peak hour traffic. There was a green tick on this line. There was a red cross on this line. And I could have easily gone, you know, I don't feel like driving in this lane with this green tick. I just feel led to go into this lane with the red cross with semi-trailers coming at me at 80 miles an hour in this direction. Well, the fact is I could have done what I felt. I, no one was going to stop me. There's no barrier. I could have easily just gone into that lane, but there would have been a consequence. Yes. The consequence, I would have been run over by a semi-trailer. Mm -hmm. Well, the deal is, God says, I want you to obey everything in my word so that you will prosper and have great success. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be defeated and run over, mm -hmm. then you need to stay within the boundaries of what my word says. If you want to have good, godly, biblical success, then we need to obey the word of God and do what it says. He says, for then that you may observe to do to all, to do to all that is written in it. For then, and I love this, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Some of us in Christianity have never ever heard this. What do you mean I will? I thought it was all God. Well, it is all God and all you. If you apply the principles of the word of God, you will make your way prosperous and you will have great success. When I first read this 30 years ago, it revolutionized my life because I thought if I just prayed more, if I just fasted more, and some of us are so spiritually minded and so heavenly minded, we are no earthly good. We have no idea how to apply practical principles from the word in order to build and develop our lives. We think if I just fast, if I just pray, but we are not just spirit beings. We are predominantly a spirit person that lives in a body and has a soul, but we are tripartite beings created body soul and spirit. So if all you know is how to pray and how to fast and how to go to church, you're not going to be that earthly good. If you want to make your way prosperous, if you want to have good biblical success in every realm of life, financially, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, then we need to read the word. We need to do what is in the word. And guess what the word says? Then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have great success. You get a choice in doing all of this. It was revolutionary for me yes. to find out like, you mean I can? You mean God wants me to? I don't just have to sit and wait and just go, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know, God in his sovereignty can do it. Well, God is sovereign, yes, but he didn't make a puppet here on earth. He gave us a brain. He gave us a heart. He gave us a personality. And most importantly, he gave us a book. He gave us a book that is filled with principles that pertain to every aspect of life. That's what I love about the word of God. Yes, it is a sacred text. Yes, it is our holy scriptures. And it has wisdom that pertains to our relational life our emotional well-being, our spiritual well-being, our financial well-being, our health and our mental well-being. This book pertains to every aspect of our life. It is not going to only 
teach you how to be spiritual. Because if that's all we needed, God would not have put us on a natural earth. He would not have given us economic systems, environmental systems, biological systems, scientific. We have so many different realms and God expects us to operate in those realms. And he doesn't want us just to get by. Some of you, you're great at praying, but you cannot balance your checkbook. I know some of you are going, what am I watching right now? Some of you are great at praying, but you couldn't run around the block. You're not fit enough yet. And believe it or not, this book pertains to every aspect of your life. You are not going to want to miss one show in this series, because in this series, we're going to look at every aspect of our life and we're going to learn no matter how you start in life. If you are in the word of God and you practice the principles that are found in the word of God and you are empowered and strengthened by the spirit of Almighty God, then you will make your way prosperous and you shall have great success. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You all are awesome.